life's as exciting as I do. <laughs> uh, good times. Just a busy week. I got a show on Wednesday. Break a leg. Thank you. We'll deal with that later. Um, so yeah. Uh, who remembers what we did last session, guys? I know it's been a couple weeks, but... We did a lot of wandering around this place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Talking to a lot of uh, people that have information, and then finding out that information is mostly useless so far. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, you you certainly did do that. Now we're actually just going to try to find Frost Rants, I guess, at this point. Were we going to the Frost Rants, or were we going to the uh, dwarves or whatever there was up north? I thought we were going to the Frost Giants, but... Did we have a plan for them? I thought we were going to the Dwarves first to try and uh, see if they can help us and also see if we can find a Yeti. Or something. So something impressive to show to the Frost Giants. There are lots of awful, evil things that live up north. Thoughts? I could not really hear you. Oh, my bad. Can you hear me now? Much better. Sweet. Okay. Um, so, thoughts. Frost giants. Head north to kill things. Other plans. I still think that heading north is uh, the best plan to see if the dwarves can help us. Probably, but I guess my thought was that maybe if we talk to the Frost Giants first, they can say something that they would be impressed by, and then we don't have to go the extra effort. When we bring back something, they're just like, eh. <laughs> and then that was all for naught. <laughs> My worry with that as a plan is we'll go to talk to them and they'll just sort of attack us. And then we'll die. Or run away, which would mean we'd have to go and do something like extra impressive. Fair enough. So, not going to the Frost Giants then, I'm guessing. I'm hearing. Well, that's two of us. And I have to be right back. Um, Ned. Fuck. <laughs> Why am I thinking of everybody in the campaign names tonight? <laughs> um, I blame the beer. Oh. Uh, um, Ox and Rich, 
What do you guys think? Uh, I'm in favor of the dwarves. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's... Uh, I guess you guys are heading north then. Um, so last session when we ended, it's probably late. Um, we'll say you guys slept in the meantime just so that you can get started if you wish. Um, but yeah, you all are off to go see the dwarves, the wonderful dwarves of the north. Just make sure to follow just make sure to follow the totally not at all bricked road. Bingo. Bingo. Alright. Um, so actually, question for you. The quite the idea was raised last session of hiring somebody to like show you around and who knew how to track. Is that something you guys wanted to pursue? Are you are you trying to imply that our our plus one and plus two survival skills aren't going to be enough? One of you has a plus two. Yeah, I'm kind of wow, surprised by that too. It's it's a wisdom based skill. I actually have a plus two. Too. Wow, <laughs> you have two plus twos in survival to go and track uh, to go and track some nasty shit. It's up to you guys. Sounds like my first date. I am fully in favor of getting lost. <laughs> you want to get lost? It is a bit difficult to get lost, though. though. To be fair. Wow, everybody's got plus twos in this shit. So we should be fine, right? Define fine. Oh god, okay, no. we're all going to die? That's close enough. <laughs> Nobody wants to, uh, to try and find a tracker, though? I am fully in favor of getting lost. Of course Those you Those of us with slightly higher intelligence might disagree with that. All right, what are we I trying to get much... killed by? <laughs> so yeah, we have the, one of those big cat us. disagrees with me? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> we should be looking like, hey, what do you think, Relix? <laughs> You're not even wrong. Um, Adriel, that's your fucking name now. Yeah. Um, the idea was raised last session of getting a tracker to help you not get lost in the wilderness. Ah. Uh, there was some debate as to whether or not you all wanted to do this. If I recall correctly... The uh, answer we got to looking for a tracker was we, we could get some barbarians and the local tribes people to uh, agree to let us travel with them for a while. But in terms of just like hiring a guy for cash, that was not something that seemed to be a thing that could happen. Or nobody knew of anyone who would do that. That does sound familiar. Yeah. I mean, you can look around more. Um, I don't think you guys tried... You didn't try Rich's criminal contact for that, actually. Um, you could always try him. But, yeah, it's easiest way to get a tracker around here is with the barbarians. The difficulty with that is if we're going like a day and a half away, they're probably not going to want to bother.
This is true. I mean, we go with them as far as they'll be willing to go and then continue on. Well, no, be us going point. with them as, as far as we're, we're willing to go. Because the problem isn't that they won't go far enough. The problem is they're going to want to go for like three weeks. We want to go for like a day and a half in a different direction. I mean, again, we can go along with them for as long as our paths converge. And then we were the risk of getting lost in the wilderness in the cold. Yeah. Yeah, no, the other the other part of it is the impression I got is our paths would diverge at the city gate, so they're going up to the ice flows. We're heading straight north. The ice flows were northwest. Yeah, I'll put is you back on the or? world map and you can see for yourself. But yeah, they're northeast. Northeast. They're heading on to the big glacier, mostly to the uh, to the mostly east, but a little bit northeast of Brian Shender, which is and the- where exactly are the doors on this? Uh, there you see that little green lump just north of Brian Shander. We don't need anybody to escort us there. We can do that. It's like not even outside the red box. You're not wrong. A red box doesn't actually mean anything, though. It's just kind of there to, as a notice. Now, the issue is we almost got lost coming into town from 10 miles away. Yeah, but we also got dropped off like in the middle of fucking nowhere. We were dropping off on the road! Were we? I thought Sephiroth just like dropped us in the middle of the forest. Zephyros, I'm pretty sure, dropped you guys on the road. Well, that sounds like a Zephyros thing to do. Yeah, you didn't hate us. Don't be so sure. Oh, sad. He didn't hate us in particular. Nah, this isn't the Underdark. Everybody you come across is not going to immediately hate you. But yeah, I definitely want to put some more time into possibly finding a tracker or a dwarf who might be going that way or somebody. Yeah. Us on our own, probably not going to work out. Seconded. Rich uh, Ox? If you insist. I'm still in favor of getting lost. You don't have to worry about eating or breathing. Breathing. This is true. Does he have to worry about freezing? Uh, that's a good question. Probably. Because, I mean, even if you are magical, you still have to have lubricant from somewhere. Oh, I have lubricant. <laughs> uh, damn it. Living doll. I'll watch it. Um, yeah, that one. That one was <laughs> All right. But, Rich, are you there? Can you still hear us? Can you speak? Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, so, find tracker is what I am hearing. Also, I want to summon an elk. 
Oh, right. Yes, you can totally summon an elk as your paladin mount. I had forgotten that that was a question you had asked. But yes, you can tote summon an elk. Aw, oh, yeah, man. All right. You don't need a token for it, but that's about it. Uh, I think there's one on the... I think there's one floating around. I'll find it for you. Uh, yeah. I'll find it for you when combat comes. And it will come. I mean, you're going hunting for trophies. What did you yeah. think was good? We could talk uh, it into dying for us. Um, yes. So, uh, hunting for trackers. Do you want to wait around and hope that, um... Do you want to wait around and hope that some of the barbarians come around, or do you want to try and find somebody else in town? Why not both? Why not both? All right. I assume, I assume one, one than the, one other. Than the other. Fair enough. And then other, other, and then barbarian as a backup, since we know they at least have a specific place they're going. Fair. Um, right. All right. So first things first. The if you go around and talk to the gate guards who you've come in contact with before. Um, you can go and talk to the deputy that you met at the gates a couple of days ago. Um, she'll tell you, oh yeah, there's been no uh, no barbarians coming in lately. They should be in in a few days if you're willing to if you're willing to wait, though. Normally they come in the island once a month. Only problem would be if the, uh, if the giants delay them. What about other sorts of trackers, then? Oh, I think there's a couple around. Where are you trying to go? It's called the... We're talking about... What was the name? What was the name? Kelvin's Cairn. The Kelvin's Cairn. Oh, yes! If you want trackers, you can always just head up to the dwarves in the mountain there and ask them to show you around. They know the area better than uh, most people down here do. They live there after all. So it's easy enough to get there. Oh yes. It's just a uh, day and a half north, if not. If you want somebody local, there's also um, there's a couple of rangers that come in and out occasionally. Um, there's a uh, there's a couple of knights of Tyre as well who are good at tracking. Try uh, there's a fellow at the hooked knucklehead as well who might know some people around that I don't. So ask him. What was that name? Uh, it's the bar that Rich's criminal contact is in. Ah, okay. The hooked knucklehead. Okay, I thought there was like an actual person's name. No. Okay. He does have a name, I think. Probably. Gotcha. But it is not his name. Thank our lady deputy. Oh, no problem. Anytime, anytime. Happy to help. All right, question. Is there a road from Brinchander to whatever, Karen? No. Uh, no. Not right now, there wouldn't be. 
Is there a road from uh, there to the mountain she was talking about, yeah, which, seemed, which seemed to be different, different from where we're going? No, the mount. The name of the mountain is Kelvin's Cairn. Um, the dwarves live underneath it. Ah. Mine in the mountain. Well, it looks like the other option is up to you, darling. Just looking at Richard. My friends are normally in a bit higher places. Rich. Yes. Um, you have the choice to either go hunting around town or hit up your criminal contact for information about trackers in the area. Yeah, I can do that. Sweet. All right. You can head back over to your lovely, lovely inn by the name of the Hooked Knucklehead. Um, it's still just as shabby and uh, just as a little bit, feels a little bit angry um, in the air as it was last time you were here. Your buddy with the eye patch, who is definitely not a pirate, is still sitting at the bar nursing a drink. He hasn't left since you talked last. Probably not. He was born in that bar. He will die in that bar. In that bar, he'll die on that stool. No, I'm sure he'll be punched off the stool. It's possible. Um, yes, yeah, so I'd like to go ask him if he knows of anybody that can help us with their directionally challengedness. Ooh, hey. Good to see you again. You were uh, looking for some of them there trackers? Yes, I'd like one tracker, please. Ooh, there's a guard. He's staying at Kelvin's Comfort. Not a bad tracker. Who oh, was it, that dude? Yeah, I was going to say, what was that guy's name? He's, uh, his name's Barrack, I think. Go around asking for him. Likes his whiskey. Yeah, it's him. And you're sure that guy's just a guard? Nah. He has got something else going on. He's He's got too nice armor to be just a guard. Probably a knight. Trying to be sneaky. Not doing a very good job. So you think, though, he can track, even though he's... Yeah. He's not bad at it. All right, I'll take your word for it. Much obliged, friend. You think you could uh, help lube things up again, so to speak? 
get us started, you know? Yeah, Everybody sure. need lube today. <laughs> God damn it. Ah, much obliged, much obliged. Um, it's probably, say, four copper for a drink for the guy. Yeah, that's, yeah fine. that's fine. All right. You pay out. He uh, snatches the beer up as soon as it's filled, raises it to the rest of the room. Let's get it started in here. The rest yeah, of the like, bar. Some, like, some guitar twang or something like that, like in a sitcom where somebody says their catchphrase. <laughs> The rest of the uh, room begins to murmur and rumble a little bit. You might want to get going. The orgy's gonna... about to start. Dude. What have you sent us? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we pass. That's wow. the image we pass around. <laughs> Anytime, like uh, the CEO of the company I work at talks about reducing friction. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. You recall when those uh, guys were holed up in the national park in Oregon? Yeah, they were, yeah. they were taking it over, and they asked for supplies. That was one of the supplies they were sent. <laughs> Citizen of the internet. I prefer Astro Glide. I like it. I like it. 55 gallon drum of clear guide lubricant. Why is it an electronics company that sells this? I have so many questions now. Hey, 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 don't kink shame. <laughs> you know, it's funny because there's a gimp suit in the who viewed this item also viewed section. <laughs> <laughs> who else needs 55 gallons of lube? Yeah, there's a gimp suit, there's look and feel Canadian breath spray, and there's... What the fuck is this? Check that out. What? It's pretty obvious what it says. I knew that was going to be what you. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> is a circumcision trainer. I don't want to know exactly what it says on the thing. The moil or whatever it is. I don't, I don't know who does it. You want the moil to have some kind of practice, right? I'd much rather they have practice before starting on a real person. You want your moil to have more training at their job than politician, currently. Currently. <sighs> Let's not touch that, but I thought it was done by, like, doctors and shit. It can be, too. Well, doctors also need to practice. Yeah, but... Traditionally, it's a specially trained rabbi. If it's medical, it's done by doctor. All right. Well, that's a thing. That is a thing. You know, when I started, I never thought I'd be putting up an infant circumcision thing suddenly on my Twitch. <laughs> Weirdest thing you've ever looked up because of a D&D game. Yeah, probably yeah. true. Which says a lot, because it's been a lot. Yeah. I don't know if it's quite the weirdest thing, but it's... Yeah, actually, it is. It is. Anyhow, enough about infant circumcision trainers. I can't say that with a straight face right now. <laughs> Back to the game. Oh, God. Now it's going to be on my mind for the rest of the game. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. All 
right, then, pretty boy. You should, uh, get to stepping. I'm out. Cool. There's a peace sign, drops a mic. I figured it was the money to the bartender to kick shit off. Hey! We're kicking shit off, boys! Let's get it on! So that's what happened to him. As he says that, the door closes behind you, Rich. You hear a solid thud against it as you do. Or as it does. Good door. Indeed. I'll go meet up with the other folks and kind of let them know what the deal is. And I mean, they were all there when we were talking about this guy with what's her name, right? Eldora? Yeah, we were all in the room when he fell down trying to be sneaky. Oh, yeah. The day drinker. Yeah, the day drinker. You were, uh, I can't remember if Beldora told all of you guys or if it was just a couple of you. It was just uh, Rich, I think. Okay. Yeah, so Rich, you'd recognize the name then. Sir Barrick. Yeah, so we'll go grab the rest of the group and kind of yeah, tell them what's up. All right. What do you want to tell them about our friend the night? Just basically everything that Eldora told me. Eldora. Eldora. All right. So... TLDR, in case people don't remember. He's secretly a paladin who's trying to find a criminal um, and is not having great success. He's trying to masquerade as a guard right now um, and is kind of spending his days day drinking because he's pretending that there's no work. Which, to be fair, there isn't. Hmm. Well, if this guy seems to think he's more than he appears, maybe it's worth looking into. It's quite the elaborate disguise. I'm a very good method actor. You're, you are correct. A bottle of fire brandy is a great disguise for a paladin. There are drinking paladins. Not up here. So there's no dwarf paladins up here? That's true. There are no drinking human paladins up here. Normally. All right, so my contact, though, says he's a legit tracker. Maybe not the best, but he's legit. So, so do we want to go talk to him? I go talk. Assuming he's a better tracker of animals and places than he is of people. Ouch. <laughs> I'm just going by what you told me, darling. Well, I don't think we need a master tracker for the the immediate tri trip. Yeah, sorry. We just need someone who can uh, who's a little bit more accustomed to these lands to get us to the dwarf hold.
That's fair enough. I'm sure we can persuade him. Somehow I don't doubt it. Well, especially if we're going somewhere he wants to go. Or not for nothing, if he's looking for somebody who needs to be settled in a town, he may want our help. Did you say subtle? Subtle. <laughs> that doesn't sound like something we would do. Yeah, you guys don't sound very subtle. I'm sorry. Well, some of us don't, just don't look subtle. I mean, I'm sure we can help him. I just don't know about the subtle part. So where is he now? Probably the same place you guys last saw him. <laughs> the end of Kelvin's comfort. So let's go head that way. All right. Whoops, that's the wrong map. Disregard that, please. Disregard, Disregard. what? <laughs> exactly. Good job. You're disregarding things. All right. So you can head straight over to the other inn. Um, you notice uh, it seems much the same as before. You notice the uh, the guard drinking fire brandy by the bottle at the bar without too much of a problem. He's still in his armor. Yeah, he's wearing pretty nice armor. Um, he's got, you know, there's no emblems of tear on it or anything. Uh, but he's got a pretty nice cloak draped over the back of his, draped on his stool. Um, and he's carrying a sword. Okay. I'll approach him. And get his attention. I would just sit down at the table and stare at him. What, may I ask, are you looking at? Hopefully, someone who can help us. Help you do what? Presently, we need to travel to Kelvin's Cairn. We're not, however, familiar with the local region or the local weather and require some assistance. And do you think... I'm going to help you. In exchange for coin? Yes, I was hoping so. Well, it's not the usual caravan, but it'll do. It will do. So you're looking for me to accompany you just to Kelvin's caravan? Yes. That was the immediate need. If May there are other needs, we'll discuss it then. May I ask why, fair maiden? We wish to ask the dwarf something. Urgently enough to go all the way out there to them? Obviously. Hmm. And you and your, dare I say, heavily armed and often beautiful. Hello. He nods at Inks. She'll give a little coy little uh, twiddle of the fingers. He also nods at Ox. Ox will nod back. back. 
You and yours need my protection or my expertise. Not so much protection, but we're not mountain folk. I see. I see. Well, come and find me here whenever you're ready to go. I'll be ready and waiting. Are we ready already? <laughs> I don't, we don't have to gather up anything, do we? We did do shopping did do before. Sh you did yeah. do shopping already. Oh. So, all right, get up. We're moving. One moment, one moment, please. He takes the uh, bottle that he has on the table, upends it, and downs the rest of it. I do like a man who can hold his liquor. He pulls, uh, he pulls his cloak from his stool and uh, fastens it around his neck. Good question. Roll perception. <laughs> yeah, it does not smell nearly as strong as you would expect. Right, so, so it smells like he's been drinking water down stuff. Oh, yeah. All right. Interesting. Okay. I, Sir Merrick Byleth, will bring you to your goal and render such services to you as are necessary. Shall we be off? There is ground to cover, and it's not particularly friendly this time of year. Well, and then with that, Adriel just turns and walks out. Excellent. That's excellent. What we're for. Let us be off. He gets up, stumbles a little bit, but uh, seems remarkably stable as you all head for the door. As you exit, um, Barak encloaks himself in uh, winter clothing for the area and begins to lead you all towards the north gate. We'll just be heading out the north gate then if you want to hit, go see the dwarves. There, it's not far. Did we want to buy any other mounts? Did anybody want to buy mounts? Yeah, you all have warm clothing. That was, I think, one of the first things you guys did when you got here, actually. Yeah. And I assume warm clothing includes, like, snowshoes and other basic winter survival stuff. Yeah. For the sake of convenience, yes, we will include that. Man, yeah, you're, you're equipped to go out um, for at least a couple nights. You might not be equipped to go live with the barbarians for a while without some help, but you can definitely handle going to Kelvin's care. Well, I mean, we can ask our guide what he thinks of the track, trek, and see if buying any other mounts would be worthwhile. Good point. Oh, oh, I suppose you could. It's not but... a long one, though, and there's no real roads to keep them on. Plus, there's, well, there's plenty of things north of the mountains that liked, north in the mountain, that like to prey on horse. 
And they're not exactly the quietest of beasties. Thanks, just smirks at that. So I'll go with no. We do not want to get any other mounts. Not unless you'd like them to probably be eaten. All right. That just means you get to be a grandiose, darling. I'm sorry, what? Wow. She's talking to Adriel. Huh. And currently she's just leading the uh, as yet unnamed animal. Did you guys buy mounts? No, no. She used her spell, right? Oh, right. Spell. So it's an intelligent, it's not like, you know, the smartest member of the party or anything. <laughs> but it's intelligent six, not that far behind either. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if it's your summon steed, you can resummon it or dismiss it at will, I believe. Correct. No, resummoning always takes a spell slot. Or relatively at will. Yeah, I mean, if, if it if it gets killed, it's not like the end. It's of the not world. like if it dies, you have to rebuy a mount or something. No, okay. the spell slot, but I can't just do it all day. Right. Alrighty. Sam, so, yeah, you can totally bring your. Uh, you could definitely ride your elk. It would probably be better equipped than most of the uh, most of the mounts they have here for the trek up to the cairn. Plus, if it dies, you don't have to worry about buying a new one. Yeah, definitely bringing the, uh, that, but I just wanted to see if I uh, talk about bringing any other mounts for cash. But apparently not. Regular sized elk, right? Yeah, just an elk. All right. Um, you'll seem adequately provisioned for the trek. You've got sure. Oh, is that a is that a summoned elk? Or do my eyes deceive me? It is celestial. Beautiful. Beautiful. Careful with that. He, smiles. he smiles a little bit. He does not respond to Inks and just continues with a soft little smile as he turns away from you. Shall we be off then? Kelvin's cairn isn't yep. far, but I'd like to get a start before we before the dark comes. And then after you, darling. Alrighty. So Sir Beric will lead you all out into the wilderness north of Brian Shander. So it's not too far of a trek. You can easily see Kelvin's Cairn off in the distance. Um, occasionally, Sir Beric will point out something interesting um like a particular type of tree that's only found up here or the tracks of some of the few animals that are near the city like this um who's marching how actually or to put it simpler uh what is your marching order 
Ox would be right behind him because he wants to look at all the things that are being pointed out. Okay. Inks is probably like second to last. She doesn't want to be at the very back. I'll probably end up taking up the rear then. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yeah, you sure you don't want any of that uh, clear guide stuff? Gotta get Gotta this get party this started. started. Uh, y'all are, y'all are something, that's for sure. All right, uh, perception checks all around, please. All right, so these are not hard to see. You all see... Um, some enormous flat-footed tracks um, heading off to the to the east of where you guys are. Um, Sir Beric cheerfully identifies them as mammoth tracks. If you're interested in them at all, they come through here. Oh, every. Uh, Every once in a while, there, there'll be a couple migrating through here. Mostly they head through the mountains to the east. Not too many big creatures like that want to be close to Brian Shander. Think this would impress the trolls? Giants. And, I don't know, it's a good question. Impress trolls? Impress giants? I'm sorry. What? What do you mean, what? It's pretty obvious that, I mean, the statement holds, takes care of itself in what it is. No, I, I understand that. I was... Educated quite well, thank you. Then what why the question? What I'm more concerned about is why. Why are you impressing giants? Why not? He raises an eyebrow at that. I just assumed it was a statement of the scope. I don't remember you guys mentioning anything about uh, impressing nope. giants in the scope of this job. Nope. He didn't ask any questions. We didn't answer any of his unasked questions. Inks was making well, the statement as if they were saying, is it big name. enough to be, like, is it so big that it having one would impress a giant? Basically, like a statement of uh, hyperbole. Ooh, another problem. How would we actually move it? Maybe we could tame it. I think doing that would defeat the purpose, though. I'm sorry. Could I ask you all to rewind to why you were trying to impress giants? I thought that you were trying to go to Kelvin's cairn and ask some questions. We're doing that. Would you like us to ask you questions about your true motives out here? Go ahead. You're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to answer your questions. I don't think that was the question, Richard. Why were you been oh. trying to be a guard? I've been curious about okay. that. I'm pretending to be. You're pretending to be curious? No, pretending to be a guard. You're pretending to be a guard? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's in this conversation with such a different information levels. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Wait, why is Inks pretending to be a guard? <laughs> and we add another one. 
<laughs> no, that's not really any kind of layer here. <laughs> that's a separate thing outside of this Venn diagram. <laughs> There's a brigand by the name of the Weevil. He's a dwarf. He's rumored to be somewhere up in Icewind Dale. He is why I'm here, and he is why I'm pretending to be a guard. I'm hoping to lure him out. Yes, the Weevil. So you're Does just expecting to find him in a specific town? Guard? No! But many people, such as himself, are in the habit of hiring guards to help them move between places. If you catch my drift. And what has this weevil done? The usual for such people. Raided a couple caravans, killed some people, stolen from the settlers. The exact details are gruesome and rather unimportant, frankly, for you to know. What matters is that he's been taking advantage of the people here, and it is my job to bring him to justice. What a noble endeavor. Yes. <clears throat> he does not actually say that. He just implies it very heavily. Yeah, he kind of just raises an eyebrow at you when you say that. Are you mocking me, fair lady? Of course not. I think it's very noble of you. He raises his eyebrow even higher. Anyhow, you've distracted very well from why you're trying to impress giants. Have you ever had a conversation with a giant? Not one that didn't end with my weapon in its face. Yes, well, that wouldn't work for our long-term goals, so we need a way to have a conversation that doesn't end with weapons and faces. Let's just say that we also are on a bit of a noble endeavor of our own. The giants to the east. Say again? The giants to the east, I assume. No smile at that. They're part of it. I see, I see. If you wanted a trophy to talk to the giants, you should have said that straight off. Just like you told us your real intentions straight off. Yeah, Adriel just shrugged. We didn't trust you. Uh, come, follow me. I know, I know just the place. He changes course a little bit from heading directly to Kelvin's cairn. There's a spot to the east of Kelvin's cairn, a little veil. There's always something nasty there. If you're looking for a trophy, that would be a positively ideal place to find one. I just want to make sure he's being straight with us now. I mean, this seems legit. He doesn't seem to be uh, to be deceiving you. Okay. Okay. Am I still audible? Yes. Yes. Awesome. 
Thanks. Well, then what sort of things should we expect? We'll take a hit off take our little pipe. Off our <laughs> you talk about the pirate smoking the good stuff. Nobody oh, seems God. to remember she's always smoking a pipe. It's true. Oh, you know, the usual. Wolves, yetis, there's a few bears. I know of at least one Remoraz nest up there. And I know, for a matter of fact, that there's, uh, most recently, there's been a dragon spotted flying overhead. I'll we'll about that. What type has been going around out here? Sorry? Asking me knows the type. Oh, white. They're always white up here. Oh, I should have expected. Nothing else likes the cold quite so much as they do. All the other ones have the sense to live somewhere southern. Will you follow me, though? Or do you still truly wish to ask the dwarves a question? Let's do this. All right. Why not both? Up to you. This is your expedition, after all. If you know a shortcut, who am I to complain? Let's find ourselves something interesting then. <laughs> Sorry, I just rolled for what you guys were going to find. Did we find, Did the, we shittiest find the shittiest thing or thing? the thing that's going to kill us? Well, it depends on your perspective. The shittiest thing that's going to kill us. Righto! Pip pip cheerio! Off! Remoras. Off to the veil. He seems to be in a much better mood now, as well, as he leads you onward. He is humming and... He seems more enthusiastic when he points things out. Even when he points out uh, some mammoth dung that they've clearly left behind them. Inks pretends to be super interested the entire way. <laughs> you would. But eventually night comes before you reach this lovely veil. Um, what do you guys... I assume you don't want to march through the night. Going to make a bold assumption on that front. Um, Pretty safe best. assumption. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, you can go ahead and set up camp um, anywhere in particular that you're looking for. We're setting it up. Whatever kind of place you recommend, you know, devoid of monsters. Right. Okay, you can find a relatively empty 
or empty cave minus a couple of bats um, without too much trouble. Um, he recommends that you set up camp in there because, you know, shelter from the wind. Your fire isn't immediately visible. Um, yeah, good times. As you enter the cave, um, Sir Beric occupies himself with uh, clearing away a little bit of snow that's drifted in and beginning to set up a fire. What do y'all do? He's going to offer to help with the fire and do a little press or do a little pressed agitation. Ledger will spend some time making sure Sakafalo, the elk, is situated before you know sitting down to medit sitting down to meditate herself. Okay. Um yeah, you can I mean the floor's stone, so it's not too too comfy. Um but you can you can get your elk comfy. To make a little bit of a noise, which probably didn't sound like it, but was supposed to sound vaguely contented. Okay, yeah, you can wrap her up, her, him, her, her, up in a blanket. Um, and she will make contented elk noises at you. I have no idea what those sound like. Use your imagination. Contented elk noises. Yeah, sure. They literally, uh, it's literally saying contented elk noises. <laughs> They're yeah. saying perfectly executed Wookiee noise. <laughs> All right. What are the rest of you doing? Uh, setting up a bedroll and whatnot, helping with fire, passing out rations. Fair. Prestidigitating rations. That's the spirit. Rich, Ox, are you guys doing anything besides just settling down to sleep? No, let's put it. Okay. Just hanging out by the fire trying to stay warm. Fair enough. Thanks might pull out her liar for a bit and see if uh, Sir Merrick actually has a decent voice to go into humming. Let's find out if he does or not. Oh, he's got decent charisma. He is a paladin. I mean, he carries a tune, but that's about it. Good enough. Good enough. Like, he's not horrendously out of pitch and he can keep rhythm, but that's about all he's got going for him. Good enough for drinking songs. <laughs> I could always do with a new drinking song for my repertoire. Uh, Sir Beric stridently refuses to give you any new drinking songs if you ask him. If she did, it was just very extremely obvious uh, in jest. Teasing him. Yeah, his reaction is along the lines of nope, nope, nope. Just grin and wink at him. 
Such an easy mark. He rolls his eyes. Go to sleep. It's late. As you wish, darling. He mutters a couple of unkind sounding things under his breath as he gets into his bedroll. Tough crowds nowadays. Anybody on watch? In the sense of I'm not really a sheep. Yeah, Sam. Um, all right. Roll. Hmm. Ox, roll a perception check for me. That'll do. Uh, in the middle of the night, you hear roaring. It's from far off and, oops, what sounds like above you. But uh, something's out there making quite the racket. Hmm. Is there any... Possibility that I might recognize what it is. Roll nature. Uh, it's big and it's bad. Good to know. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of assuming that you kind of just go four hours, Adriel, four hours, Ox. Yeah. Um. And then whoever else wants can join. But um, besides that, yeah, you hear roaring. You briefly hear um, some repeated thumping noises. But besides that... Is the thumping far off as well? Yeah. All right. It can wait till morning then. Alrighty. That's the spirit. But you all awake in the morning. Um, a little bit cold, but safe. It's a beautiful sunny day, perfect to go monster hunting on. Um, Sir Beric seems unreasonably chipper. Wake up, wake up! Come, come, we have monsters to fight. Ooh, I can't wait. This is going to be a good day. I can tell already. I can tell someone's been squandering quite high potential sitting around in a bar. Sir Beric opens his mouth, looks at you, and then just closes his mouth again. One sec, let me check something. <laughs> nah, never mind. Never mind. Um, he just doesn't seem to know quite what to say to that.
No, no, no. She's used to leaving people speechless. Come, come, pip, pip, cheerio. It's time to get on the road. Uh, same marching order as yesterday. Works for me. Sure. Sure. Good, good, good. All right. Um, yeah, so he continues to uh, lead you guys onwards through the snowy tundra. Um, no worries. As you go, um, he continues to point out things that he uh, thinks are interesting. Occasionally, it's things as boring as moss. It seems as if Beric is an enormous nerd. Um, but eventually he, uh, Ox, you're still following right behind him, right? Yes. Okay. Eventually he looks back at Ox and says, so you said your name was Ox, yes? Um, well, Ox for short. Technically my name is 0x9213LT. He looks bemused by that. So what are you, Ox? I am Ox. You are Ox. But who is Ox? Ox is me. Ox looks at him like he's an idiot. <laughs> Thanks, Walsmark. <laughs> The entire time. <laughs> You're not going to get much more than that out of him, darling. Hmm. Why are you here, Ox? Why are any of us here? I'm here because you all asked me. They're here for, I assume, their own reasons. But I'm not asking about any of us. I'm asking about you. Why are you here, Ox? We are here to talk to the giants that they might become peaceful. I am here to spread peace and harmony. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I yes, and stools. Don't forget the stools. Can never forget the stools. Spreading peace through violence. Ah, yes. Pass a crush! crush. <laughs> I believe the correct term is pacifist. Exactly. Yeah, it's the it's the fist that pacifies people. Ah, uh, yes. R.I.P. Thalen. Yeah, rip Arklan as a whole, probably. I... I see, Ox. Would you mind terribly if I asked you more questions like this in the future? Not at all. Thank you, Ox. Okay. Barrett continues leading you onwards, though. Eventually, um, actually, hey, Ox, did you mention that uh, those peculiar noises you heard last night? 
Uh, yeah, I would have mentioned them in the morning. Good, good. All right. Eventually, um, you start to uh, you hear another roar again, and you start to hear the thumping from last night. Sounds as if it's getting closer to you guys. Is this what you're talking about, Ox? Yes. How does our uh, paladin friend feel about this? Sounds like we may have found a lovely new... We may have found our new dragon friend. So he looks up, eye scanning the sky. If you're looking to impress a frost giant, this is the way to go. They Do you know what it is? Sorry? Do you know what it is? You mentioned it last night, Ox. The dragon. Ah. Probably. Probably. Aside from being a dragon, what do you know of it? It's relatively young. It's probably just ranging for, uh, starting to range for the first time from its parents. There's always been a few adults and older ones that live in the sea of moving ice, but they have to spread out eventually. White dragons like that don't, don't live together well. Dragons in general are bad at that. True. They certainly are. Are you all, and he looks expectantly at the rest of you, are you ready to fight a dragon? Yes. No, but oh well. <laughs> There's no shame in not doing it. It's... It is a dragon. Ox seems ready. I mean, it's just one dragon. I mean, this one by itself isn't a plague. It's always just one dragon. That's how it always starts. It does have the home field advantage, but that's hopefully it. You're already though. Sounds as if it's not too far away. Shall we go find it? I'm always happy to kill another dragon. Let's go. Oh, you're quite the dragon slayer, then. I'm gonna have to hear yeah. these stories. All right. So, you all start heading forward um, in the direction that Sir Beric indicates. 
overhead you can hear um, some light flapping noises and the echoing of roars. Above you, you or never mind, you come to a veil. It has a small bridge crossing the middle of it. Now as you begin to move forward to pass through this veil, the dragon swoops down from above and lands on the bridge before you and roars. Hello. Would you all please roll initiative for me? Uh, it doesn't want to talk. Tokens. Right. Um, yeah, Sir Beric and your elk are at the bottom. Um, I guess I need the rest of you. I don't actually. We can just drag ourselves on. Yeah. Um, especially because I don't actually know where I left your token. We're at the bottom. Wow, he's so adorable. You hear what almost sounds like a little chuckling. Holy shit, Sir Beric actually ruled well. I think uh, Richard killed it, though. Oh, yeah, Jesus Christ. Hold on, roll 20 is being slow. Yeah, sorry, it does that. There we go. All right, that's everybody besides the dragon. All right, so the bridge is about 30 feet up from the ground. Um, there's a pass to the right-hand side that leads up it, if you like. Um, the map is to scale. But, Rich, it is your turn. There is a dragon facing you. What do? I think I'm going to try to hit it with a... Oh, wait, what's the distance on that? Yes, I will try to hit it with a vicious mockery. All right. <laughs> How do you insult this dragon? Your mother was an earthworm. It abruptly stops chuckling and looks at Rich. <sighs> you first. And then I will do a Bardic Inspire on Ox. All right. Good times, good times. I can't move any further south, but I'd like to. I'd really mm -hmm. like to. <laughs> <clears throat> Give me a sec. Hey, 
Yeah, there should be a bit more room. It's just not covered by the map. All right. So yeah, you viciously mock the dragon, and it promises to kill you first. All right. So that puts Sir Barrack up. He's actually going to... Sir Barrack is going to move to the side of the rest of you, climb up on top of a snowdrift, and take, unsling his heavy crossbow and take a shot at the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna fail miserably. It's uh, it's gonna sail wide of the dragon. He's been hitting that fake booze too hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's gonna look a little bit disappointed in himself. Shake his head. Whoops. Uh, Adriel, you're up. Yeah. All right. First, I'm going to cast that. Okay. Uh, no, not that. That's not gonna help. Never mind. Yeah. Doesn't uh, doesn't do anything against dragons. Yeah, I just not not that. Um, can I do that? Now I will take out my longbow and take a shot. Go for it. Ah, uh, fifteen will just miss it, unfortunately. Right. You do much better than Barrack did, though. Instead of just flying wide, um, it actually hits the dragon, but it bounces off its scales. Right. And then I'll put some distance between me and uh, him, so at least it can't get at both of us. All right. Um, Ox, what's up? Um, I am going to move over here, and I don't actually have anything to do to it right now, so I'm just going to make a snowball and throw it at it. You're going to make a snowball? Yep, just pick up some snow from the ground and chuck it. You don't have okay. any ranged monk weapons? I have darts, but that's not going to do anything at this point range that's fair that's true fair. all right uh make a <laughs> make a range <laughs> weapon attack uh proficiency or no sure why not all right let's basically just deck save so we're just gonna do that it's cannon Sn snowball is a monk weapon <laughs> uh, i don't think i hit no you do not <laughs> Um, yeah, you do not hit the white dragon. It kind of looks at your attempt and chuckles a little bit. <laughs> I wave at it. Coincidentally, though, that means it's its turn. God damn it. Damn it. Odin's are hard to calculate. I'm just going to say that. Um, it's going to fly over to here. Here? No. It's actually going to drop here. And... Yeah, fuck it. Cones are hard to calculate. I don't like this. Um, but it's going to drop here, and it's going to breathe. It's uh, an icy blast of cold on, I believe that only hits Ox and Adriel. So it didn't go after uh, <laughs> Richard first. So make a con save. Both Why? Of you. Dirty what can I say? Con? Con. Uh, 
All right. So the DC okay. was 15. Um, can I add the Bardic Inspiration to that? I work on saves. Um, Rich? It does. It does indeed. I'm added to that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's still, still a 15 now. Even if you roll a 1, you still, uh, you still make the save. But still. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> they're so fun. Dragons are so fun. But uh, it's moved, call it 55 feet. It's going to swing around you a little bit and end its turn there. How much damage on a failed save? Uh, full damage, the 10d8 that I rolled. So that's Ow, 34. 34. Goodbye, fair elk. We knew thee well. Aww. Alas, poor elk. Well, you just well, named the elk a fjork. I guess so. Um, Inks. What up? Okay, so first things first. Um, is there anywhere within 30 foot range where there's some cover? <laughs> Um, this thing right here is kind of like a boulder under the snow. Um, it looks as if it would give you cover. Problem is, I'm not sure I want to be that close to it. Um, so I think I might. So I think. You can extend it further down, too. That's not a problem. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep way back away from it. At least six. Actually, get my distance here. Let's go back there. And then... Our favorite thing, and it probably won't work for me. But. Is it Phantasmal Force? It's, it's so fucking Phantasmal Force. <laughs> Actually, that's DC 15. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. I knew it. I knew I wouldn't be able to keep up that streak. That is unfortunate. Um, yeah, white dragons have shit intelligence, but not that shit, apparently. So the dragon is briefly phased, but shakes it off. Rich. How's Adriel doing for health? Not good. <laughs> Yeah. So I can heal you now, or I can attempt to take the dragon out of the fight for a while. I have some healing for myself, so. All right, then I will try to see if I can't incapacitate the dragon for a bit. All right. What are you doing to him? Hideous laughter. All right. Yeah, it was worth a shot. And I'll throw another Bardic Inspiration to Ox. All right. You know, the dragon is briefly uh, 
briefly chuckles a little bit more, but not for long. All right, so barracks up. Uh, he's going to move closer. He's going to fail again with his crossbow. God damn it, Sir Barak. And he's going to shout at the dragon, Oi! Get over here! Adriel! You are not looking so good. What do you want to do? All right. And then I'm going to do something stupid. Ooh. Just move up. Ooh. That is stupid. I like it. I do that like it. That will be my turn. Okay. Ox? All right. First, I'm going to reposition slightly. And then I'm going to punch the crap out of this thing. All right, go for it. That'll hit. And uh, we're going to go ahead and hit him with a stunning strike. Ooh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so he is now stunned for a turn, which means... Among other things, all attacks have advantage, I uh -huh. believe. So I will take my next two attacks with advantage. Wow. That is sad. Uh, that's going to be it for me, though. Yeah, unfortunately, neither of those hit. I I'm, I'm so sorry. I mean, I got the stunning strike off. That's all that matters. Yeah, and that means uh, he can't do anything this turn, basically. I can do that up to five times. Nice. Yeah, no, he can't take actions this turn. So, um, he does nothing. I guess he rolls to recharge his breath weapon, and that's uh, that's about it. He does not recharge his breath weapon. Uh, that's his turn. <laughs> Inks. Okay. Um, let us try this one more time. DC 15, Phantasmal Force. By the way, he automatically fails strength and dex saves as well, if you have any of those kinds of spells. While stunned. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> wow. He rolls a five on the con save, which he's actually good at. Well, I'm going to stay back then. <laughs> Jesus. Good times, good times. Yeah, Rich. What up? I, I would like to point out that you have allies that would also be hit by any fireballs. Eh, ally schmallies. I just think Sir Barrack's in a bad place. The rest of y'all, we could easily get this done, but I don't have fireball, so y'all can at least not worry oh, until Vince is up again. <laughs> oh, thank God. I don't have fireball. Don't have fireball. Oh, thank God. Oh. Neither of you took fireball, really? Oh I'm a very, spells. very... I'm a very much utility build. Oh, that's fair. So it's the I, best way to do casters. I do have... Uh, I can at least use a spell that'll work better next time. Okay. 
I mean, you are targeting its weakest save, but... But uh. I apparently suck at that! So I have, like, one more left of that, and then I have to go to letting you guys handle it. Yeah, Rich, uh, what are you doing this turn? Doing this so I can read what it is, because I forgot what it said. Okay. Hey. I don't think he was casting it. He was just reading the text. Yeah. Oh. He was well, deciding whether or not to do it. And again, yeah, do you have any dex or strength save spells? Use he does um, 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 I I have spells. Yes. <laughs> you do you have grease? No. Do you have grease? No. Do you call yourselves oh. utility casters? I'll throw that to Adriel. To be fair, it okay. has wings. Your wounds is a touch range spell. Oh, damn it. Yeah, you would have to run in touching when I. Yeah, no. It's healing word that's the ranged one. Yeah, apparently I didn't get that, so. Yeah, just go for that again. Okay. Hey! All right. He is now prone as his chuckling from earlier becomes uncontrollable. Um, yeah, good stuff. The young white dragon has fallen prone. Oh, oh that breaks, breaks really through. easily on damage, though. Yeah. Yeah, I missed that part. <laughs> All right. Sir Beric is going to move up to get close to it this time, though. He's going to move. Hey, that'll actually hit. Uh, so he'll pull out his maul, make a heavy swing at it. And that'll actually hit. And he's he's going to throw a smite on top of that, actually. That's 20 damage. Oh. Yeah, check oh, that's for that crit. Cool. Advantage. Nope. That's fine. Use up the crappy rolls. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need the dragon to have those rolls later. Exactly. So we don't want them <laughs> who would be next on that. You're not wrong. But, uh, yeah, so he'll drop a smite. He'll actually hit the dragon. Um, good times. <coughs> uh, Adriel. All right. He needs to roll to not be prone. Okay. It's uh, still not prone. Or All still right. prone. All right, so first. I'm going to cast that. That's going to affect my next weapon attack. Okay. That's my weapon attack. A 12 will not hit. That's with advantage. That is already with advantage. Damn. That will remain on you though until you uh yeah. Yeah. until you actually hit him. So yep. good good. Ox. 
you have a prone, cackling white dragon on the ground in front of you. What do? Uh, punch it. Punch it good. That'll hit. Um, yeah, we'll go and train start it again. Ooh. Okay, it is not stunned this time. It's okay. I can try again. Ooh. It's, it's okay. Uh, I can still try again. Oh, your 25 hits. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was the roll to see if it breaks out of the hideous laughter. Uh, okay. Uh, stunning strike on the 25 as well. Okay, the 25, it's... Uh, and Stunning Strike on the 17 as well. Yeah, the 17 also hits. God damn it. <laughs> it's the one save it's actually good at. Yeah, I know. But I've had three chances to blow it. You Hold also on. did the most damage of anybody else. <laughs> at this point, to the dragon. Well, I rolled max twice on that turn, yeah. so... Alright, that's it for me. Alright. So, the dragon is no longer stunned. Uh, the hideous laughter has worn off. Um, so it's going to... First thing it's going to do is stand up. Hmm. I don't suppose anybody remembers if you rolled to recharge breath weapons at the beginning or end of the turn. I do not recall. Hmm. I'll look that up for you. Much obliged. He doesn't recharge it anyways. But... Hmm. Ox has done the most damage to it. Ox, say hi to the big dragon. Hello. I already tried to say hi to it. It didn't want to talk to me. It's no longer laughing and looks a good deal more serious. Uh, the 13, I believe, misses. Does the 16 hit? No, it does not. The 20 does, though. Okay. So the dragon hits you with a uh, dragon tries to reach out and bite you, and then it misses that. It hits you with a claw, but misses with another one. Oh, good to know. Thank you. And that's actually, it's used half its movement to stand up. <coughs> He's going to fly over um, Ox's head and get to this side of you. That provokes for me, right? It provokes from both you and Barrack. Hey! So you uh -huh. both and I'm gonna... The ensnaring strike would also hit on that? Yes. Um, and I think I'm gonna drop a smite in there, too. Okay. Let me go find the text for ensnaring strength. Uh, okay, so he makes a strength save with advantage. Okay. Well, the He hits the strength save. Um, Takes the extra movement damage. He does do that. Um, actually, I think one. And fifth level, so that should be an extra 2d8 on the thunder damage. Oh, Plus yeah. The divine smite. 
Holy shit. So, hold on. Eight, eight. And 20 is 36. And nine is 45. The mix of thunder, radiant, and a little bit of piercing. That's ah, okay. Some lines that don't actually hurt him, but you know. Yeah, he doesn't resist any of that. Um, so he takes that smite damage. What's the extra 2d8 for at the bottom? Uh, the booming blade calculated wrong because I'm fifth level. It's plus 1d8 on the initial hit and 2d8 if he moves. And I know I rolled without it and 1d8. All right. So after his attempt at a tactical move, he's not looking very good. You guys have been... <laughs> have been wearing him down pretty good. Um, Barrack caught him in a wing. Adriel, you got him. Um, you found a chink on his chest and got him good with a smite. That is what a sword mage does. So, you know, all in all, not looking too great. Kaboom. Yeah. The reason to play Paladin... Damn right. Smite the shit out of that, things. That's, that's three different spell effects in one hit. Yeah. This is what it built this character to do. I'm also, like, down a bunch of couple spell slots. So hold on. Yeah. Uh, Inks, what do you got? Okay. So, if... Well, apparently my trying to do damage hasn't been doing shit. So how about she is gonna take a hit off of her pipe and it gets all magic-y and shit, where's my... I am going to... This d new character sheet is difficult to figure out where the heck I paste the spell. But basically, she's gonna twin spell uh, haste on Adriel and Ox. Oh. Oh. Alrighty. All right. That magic pipe of yours has some good shit. Yeah, that's the one. Hits another 20 on wisdom saves for reasons. Uh, <clears throat> At least it's not a 15. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking 15s. And then I'll go throw a um, my last part of consideration on Adriel. All right. Cuckoo. Okay. All right. Um, Eric's turn. He'll move up. Miss with the ball. Uh, he tries to get it in the mouth, but fails. Even as he's yelling, pow, right in the kisser. He can't do it. You really shouldn't say that before you miss. He can't do it. Adriel. What up? An eight will not hit the dragon. 
You stab out with it. First attempt misses. Fifteen gets closer. Uh, you hit the dragon, but uh, can't find a hole in the scales. Is that your extra attack action? Yes. I think... Ox. What up? Punching it some more. Don't have an advantage anymore, though, unfortunately. No, you're hey, at least kidding. you have another chance to punch. And then the haste action. All right. Yeah, that one will miss. Well, it's 18 at least. Uh, how is it looking at this point? Pretty bad. Like, really bad? Like, really bad. All right. We're going to flurry of blows then to do two more attacks. Okay. For another 15. How would you like to kill your first dragon? Um, Ox basically just grabs on to its head on one side, like its ear or something with his right hand, and just starts just punching it right between the eyes repeatedly. Um, just like mechanically just pulling back, wham, pulling back, wham, until he just like breaks through the skull and punches the brain. All right. You mechanically smash your way through the dragon's skull and into its brain. And as you do that, it just crumbles when you crush its brain. There's there's a couple of twitches, but it's uh, it's dead. Dear God, is it dead? You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> So, the dragon now lies dead before you. Question part number two. How do we expect to get a piece of it? Yeah, how are you, uh, what are you taking as a trophy from your dragon? Well, prior to killing it, I would have suggested the head. That might not be the best thing to do at this point. I think that the fact that there's a giant hole in the front of its skull would actually make it a better trophy. Exactly. That would be my argument. Yeah, Fair you're enough. not wrong. Um, do you want, does everybody want trophies, though? Or do you just want the head? Uh, if possible, I'd like to grab some scales. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's plenty of dragon. Yeah, I yeah, feel like we should each get, like, a talon as a keepsake. Depending on how Depending big on that how... is. Um, that's probably, like, the size of a bear claw is probably roughly analogous. Bears are large creatures in this. Uh, so, say two or three inches long. That's not bad. I'll definitely yeah. want one. We can eventually, like, fashion them into just, like, tiny little pocket knives. I mean, if you want to wear them as trophies, you could also just have, like, make them into necklaces. Yeah, something like a cloak brooch or something. I think a scale necklace would be prettier. Good point. I definitely, I want to, I guess my question is, I want to take enough scale 
to make building armor and or barding out of it, not make that possible. It's not necessarily like the whole skin. Um, you can, um, it'll take most of the skin to do that though. And dragon scale nail is neither cheap nor fast to make. Yeah, but I'd have like the raw materials, which is a good start. Yeah, no, um, I get where you're, where you're going with this. Um, and even if it's not like full barding, but like just the bulk of the body or something like that, whatever I can reasonably get. Roll. I'd like a, I'd like a mount that isn't going to die the first time I get attacked every combat. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Um, to be fair, most things that you fight aren't going to hit you with a big-ass AoE first round either. But... Yeah, but he doesn't have a lot of hit points, or she doesn't have a lot of hit points, so... True. Um, roll... Roll nature for me. Well, no. Nature or medicine. I don't know if which one you're best in. Unless you have proficiency in something like an alchemy kit or... I just if I have any proficiency that might apply. Yeah, basically. If you have any proficiency that might apply to skinning a dragon... That's a whole lot of now, so... Yeah, okay. Um... But... <laughs> All the right, only thing yeah. I have is I have the uh, dragon saucer bonus to charisma checks with dragons. So... Yeah, no. Uh, skidding it does not count as a charisma check. <laughs> Just talk it. <laughs> okay, I'm adding I that to out of context D&D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Submit it. Um, so we could charm the skin off of it. <laughs> I think that only works well, with only you charm people down to their skin. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's only an expression. But yeah, um, you can, you have enough to either make barding, yeah, go ahead, um, you have enough to either make barding or um, armor for yourself. I'm going to say not both, though. That's fine. I have special unarmored bonuses, so. All right. Um... Everybody else, you're taking talons? What is everybody taking? Adriel's taking I will... hands for uh for Bart. Oh, honestly, all of them. Most. There's... I mean, there's probably like the neck I'm not really using all of and the wings I'm kinda of leaving behind and a lot of the leg. Probably right. just some scales for a necklace. Maybe a talon. <laughs> Well, you want the fine scales like on the neck, too. Yeah, that. there you go. That's where the pretty ones are. All right. So both of you want to steal a bit of... Uh... All right. <laughs> of course you do. Of I'm neck deep in it already. <laughs> <laughs> Almost literally. Um, Sir Barrick is pulling off a couple of uh, talons. Or he's pulling off one talon. You could persuade him without too much trouble to pull one off for you. And then we just need to figure out a way to separate the head. 
You bat your eyelashes at him. He rolls his eyes and uh, blushes just a tiny bit and pulls another talon for you. Oh, that is such a rush of <laughs> amusement for her. All right. Oh, what a day. What a lovely day. Another dragon down. This is good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> true, true. Skinning these bastards is never fun, but it gives satisfaction when you're done. Trust me. Does anybody have an axe or something to chop off the head with? Good question. I have a crowbar. Oh, I don't think that'll work. My heavy is fucking as a rapier. Sir Beric has a maul. Does he happen to have a wedge? All right. Here's what we do. Tie a rope around the head, like around the horns or whatever, so you get some good leverage. And then have like two or three of us pull on the rope to pull the head taut. So that'll make it easier to cut. Okay. And then it's two other people for... go at it with knives. I was gonna say, is not it... for nothing, if we can get the skin cut open and like work on the flesh, it's not the quick way to do it, but really you just need to break the neck once. And that you can do with the crowbar. Right. Well, I mean, so the knives will take a while to get through all, like, the meat of the neck, and then once we get down to the spine, we can use uh, Barrack's Maul to smash that, I think. That would probably yeah, be easier. Keep in mind, it's very cold meat, so it's going to take a while. Yeah. Well, and again, that's why pulling the neck taut will help with that. Um, you all have you fun with that. Get cut enough, it'll essentially like, help pull it apart. Thinks is in the back making tea for us. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm way too busy to help. Well, I figure we can have the the elk pull the rope. That that makes you mean up. the dead elk? The no, elk it. that Adriel resummoned. Ah. Adriel's an the spirit in a puff of smoke. I'm sure it's easily the strongest member of the party. Just like the cat's the smartest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, Beric is by far the strongest of anybody currently present and not dead. So Actually, it's probably stronger than the elk, really. What's the elk's strength? 16. Yep, he's stronger than the elk. He is, in fact, equally as strong as the dragon. Wow. He is stronger than elk, stronger than ox. <laughs> Equal to dragon. He is strong <laughs> like bull. All right, so you just want me to hit this dragon's neck. Am I right? No, no, well, we're going to do this a long way. Cut away at the meat with knives, and then once we get to the spine, that's when he hits it. All right. Let me know when you've gotten to the spine. It'll be a bit. Very well. I'll be waiting. He sits back and pulls out the talon that he's uh, that he pulled and starts uh, whittling a little hole in it at the base. Oh, is he going to make an instrument out of it? Or... You want to ask him that in character? Or? Yeah, I'm going to ask him what he's what he's making with it. Oh, I'm 
I'm adding it to the to the collection. And he pulls out a necklace that's got uh, three dragon claws on it. I knew he had stories. Ah, uh, I mean, yeah, you can try and uh, it's just RP thing. Yeah, you can you can do that. Lighter version of Green Flame Blade, just to make it easier. The dragon emits a pleasant smelling aroma. Um, from the uh, from the heat as well. You cannot go wrong with dragon steaks. I was gonna say, is dragon meat poisonous? I forget. Maybe it depends on the color of dragon. Yeah, I assume the poison-based ones would be poison. <laughs> or yeah, I guess I venomous. Like maybe, maybe black dragon would not be good. Yeah, acid-based ones, yeah. Yeah, but this one's cold-based. Right, but I mean, you also don't want, like, the opposite of the ass dragons, because they'll just be too basic. Wah, wah. <laughs> that was awful. You're welcome. I mean, it's not a bear pun, so... It's still acceptable. Well, yeah, of course it's not a bear pun. I'm not playing my druid here. Fucking druids and their bear puns. Anyhow, um, you all get your lovely, lovely trophies. Um, it takes you a little bit to cut through to the spine on the dragon, but it's relatively high up in the neck. Once you do, Barrack has no trouble uh, smacking it out, smashing it, um, so that you can remove its head. Cool. How big is the head? I'm kind of trying to model most of its dimensions off a bear. So I'm going to say foot and a half long. At okay. least. Yeah. Foot and a half. I don't know if you've ever seen a moose skull. They're like two and a half feet. Yeah, that's true. Moose are, uh... Moose are the largest deer, but they're like a 2,000-pound animal. I, I know. I live in Canada. Um, you've never really lived until you've seen what happens when a moose drops on somebody's car. I've come five, six feet away from that happening to me. Same. And then watching said moose walk away. <laughs> <laughs> it's a car. It's not going to hurt the thing. Yeah. You know, it's it's only fucking fucking moose. They're so stupid. Well, so what is it? I think like in Alaska, when the snow gets really high, they have to be careful about it, not because of the snow itself, but because the moose might walk on top of the houses and fall through the roof. <laughs> I know there's... um an issue in Canada where the moose will come up and lick your car because they want the salt. My understanding is it's not so much the damage to the car that that might cause, but if the moose is busy licking the salt from your car, you just kind of have to wait for it to finish. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not going like, to get it to leave. Yeah, you know what? I can that's, see that That's what she said? Like if a Send that picture to your boss. Yeah, I can't go to work yet. If a moose is standing in front of your car, there's not much you can do about it, honestly. You can't really move, because you might spook the moose, and then it might do something stupid. You can't just drive, because then it'll just fall on you and fuck your car up. So you kind of just have to sit there. Goddamn moose. Anyway, so we're looking at a couple feet of dragon head here. Yeah, a couple feet of dragon head, including like the crest and everything, probably a meter, three feet. Um, plus, you've got a chunk of neck as well. 
So, yeah, I'd say three feet solid of dragon head. Okay. Well, I was going to offer to carry it, but that's a little bit big. So, I guess we can rig up something for the elk to carry it with. Kind of wait for it to drain a little bit, so. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. And we do have a bag of holding. Oh, we do. I forgot about that. You do? You can squeeze it into your bag of holding, yes. I assume you should still let it drain, though, unless you want it to drip all over or whatever else you have in there. Yeah. So it's probably pretty well drained given how long it would take to skin the damn thing. True. True. Not to mention uh, cutting through its skin. Yeah. Yeah. Adriel will have a lot of that. Yeah, so much more to digitate. The heading dragons? No. It's just covered in the blood. It's going to take a long time to get all that out. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure it'll take about six seconds. Nah, it's six seconds per stain. <laughs> you can't just do it all at once? Nah. I mean, if it's large enough, it's all it's really all just a single stain. No, it's by volume, actually. Oh. Yeah, it's cubic foot. That's good enough. Yeah. We can double up on it. It won't take. You can press it and just say, "Fuck." Press it and just take yourself clean uh, without too much trouble. I mean, a cubic foot. It'll take you like a minute, at most. Yeah. Perhaps I should amend that to without any trouble. Two. Um, has anybody looked up, say, at that bridge and where it might lead? I did it's notice the there's a little cave there, yeah. I assume that's probably the entrance to the dwarf area. I'm actually assuming it's the entrance to the dragon slayer, but I think we should take a rest before oh, yeah. we go in there. Just a short rest. How long does it take to butcher the whole thing? Yeah, we probably have a short rest just from that. You probably had a short rest just by butchering it. All right. Well, shall we go check it out? Why not? Yeah, yeah well. Right. So, uh, this is as you enter the uh, cave, it's already coal outside. But as you enter the cave, it is noticeably uh, colder when you enter. Um, the cave is easily wide enough to accommodate the dragon entering. Um, it seems to have been slowly burrowed out. It's not as deep as uh, you might expect from a white dragon, but it's still probably 50 feet down or so before you finally come across a small pile of gold and jewels. Um, all gathered up into a nice little heap and covered with ice. Just the way white dragons like it. Of course. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste the uh, paste the list into chat of the gold and jewels that you find. Surprise! Jesus Christ, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, it is a fair chunk of change that you guys find in there. As you're clearing it out, you find a uh, rapier underneath the um, underneath all of the gold and jewels as well. It is magical. It is definitely magical. Right. It appears to bear um, a dragon's head at the base. Pommel? Pommel. I think right here still have pommels. They have big, complicated pommels. As decoration, if there's a, the head of a dragon. Okay, so it's a dragon head decoration on the hilt area. Yeah. Depending on what it does, I'm pretty sure that that rapier you'll be the best one for the rapier. But if you ever yeah, unless it rapier, does something weird, but I'm definitely going to try and figure out what the rapier exactly does. Also, if you ever upgrade from it. Let me have it. I, mean, I got a pretty fancy one as it is, but. Are any of the gems useful as spell components? Uh, they shouldn't be. And I don't think any of my spells care, but... No, I don't... Unless you're dipping further into... Uh, unless you're dipping further into Sorcerer, um, none of the Paladin spells really care about material components, I don't think. The ones that do, I, can, I use a holy symbol for them. So. Yeah. So. So not for me, but for the other saucers, that might be a thing. Because I think, uh, I think uh, not color spray. Chromatic orb, I know, has one. Identify. Yeah, but I don't think it uses any of these. None uh, of them ring a bell. Identify is like a pearl, a pearl, I think. That's a pearl. I want to say chromatic orb is a diamond, but yes. I'm not sure. Yeah. So yeah, so I don't think any of those are worthwhile. Uh, do you mind if we just convert those to gold immediately? Go ahead. For simplicity's sake. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Brian is a big ass market town. You can go. go okay. Them straight to gold. So that's 500 gold each total when you add the gems to it. Okay. Uh, are you splitting this with Barrack? Yeah, that's that's split five ways. Okay. Which is nice because it makes the math easier. Don't ever let don't ever let it be said that I don't do nice things for you guys. <laughs> By somehow rolling for a dragon. Constant fifteen. That solves most of our cash problems right there. I mean, I rolled a nine for your encounter. You should be glad that I didn't roll a ten because that's a remoraz. Fucking remoraz. Oh what? Like a full adult CR eleven remoraz. We could take it. I still don't know what that is. It's uh. Send the picture, but um. It's a burning ice worm. Oh, that. Okay. So yeah. basically <laughs> every attack spell I have is cut for Phantasmal Force would have been immune. 
basically. It's kind of Oh, whoops. <laughs> I did a thing. <laughs> uh, my bad. <laughs> that was nice of it to base 16.4 and code that for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, really, really. Fucking Google Images. I was deceived. <laughs> uh, Barrett will gladly accept your gift of gold and... Uh, Gold and gold to him, though. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, good people. I do very much appreciate this. The temple will be most excited to have this when we get back. They can do a lot of good with it. Thank you. Wait, temple? I thought he was a guard. Uh, isn't that why Inks was pretending to be a guard? <laughs> oh, you are so droll. I only got hearts, darling. <laughs> hey. Oh my god. Alright. Skipping right over that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we signed up for this charisma party. Oh my god. <sighs> Alright, skipping right over that. Beric is, uh, is counting all of his money. I assume the rest of you are doing something uh, similar. <clears throat> um... Do you want to try and find more beasties? Are you happy with your just dragon trophies? Dragons should be enough. I still think we should go to the dwarves and see if they have anything, any way to help us. But How far away are the dwarves at this point? Uh, there are a few miles west of you guys. Uh, just a few miles? Yeah, we can go visit them. Yeah, the rest of the day, but it's better to be there than camping out in the woods again. Yeah, you're pretty close to... Yeah, actually, it's probably... Adriel just I... drops off all the scales and be like, can you make something for me while I'm gone? <laughs> if you're gonna ask, there are the people to ask. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you can you can easily make your way uh, just toward the base of the mountain. Uh, Beric knows the way in. He leads you quickly to a massive iron door set into the base of the mountain. He knocks three times at the base and then mutters something in dwarvish um, into the door. Do any of you speak dwarvish? Uh, that's a good question. I thought we went over that. Yeah, I thought we did too, but I can't remember. Yeah, I it speak was, gnomish. It was when that's that one guard that, right? was being all pissy under his breath at us. Oh, all yeah. right. And none of you spoke dwarvish, and I was really surprised. Who doesn't have somebody who speaks dwarvish? Aren't most of us like elves? Wouldn't that be beneath us? Yeah, I'm pretty sure our, like, around the campfire conversations are mostly in Elvish. That's Except for Ox. Ox, Ox can actually speak Elvish. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, and we, <laughs> we converse in Elvish. Like, that's our normal talking language. Eh. Inks prefers common. Half-elf, whatnot. Or draconic for Adriel, because the two of them know it. Yeah. Ox would also probably not speak Elvish, even though he could. For what it's worth, the, the elk does understand spoken Elvish. 
Rich goes and tries and does the elvish work for Sit. Yeah, Inks, Inks is a half elf, but she wasn't raised by elves, so she doesn't really know elvish. Oh, Ox speaks elvish. But regardless of that, um, the door swings open soon-ish after uh, Barrack. Um, they have a brief muttered discussion in uh, Barrack shows him his lovely new dragon talon the with a smile on his face. Well, don't just stand out there in the cold. Come in, come in. You killed a bloody dragon. That's worth uh, that's worth a good night's rest and some good bloody ale. We thank you for your hospitality. With the last Lamian here. Oh, not yet. Most of the boys are still working. But uh, soon enough. Soon enough. As you enter the mine, um, you hear the sounds of you hear the sounds of mining, you hear pickaxes, um, you hear squeaky wheels um, of carts, um, you can hear the sound of a bellows coming from not far away as well, and the grunts of a dwarf as he is hammering um, away at some project. Try and tell that to him, I dare you. Um, so, so, you kill the bloody dragon? How did it feel? Madril turns her head to the side of it. Cold. <laughs> Ain't that right, Lassie? Ox looks at his hand, flexes it. Not that much different. Huh. Suppose not for you. Makes sense. Wish I could find me one of them someday. One of them bloody dragons. He starts reminiscing about some of the uh, past heroes of his clan as he leads you all towards uh, towards another iron door with a flagon of ale emblazoned into it. Oh, yes, there was Bruno. He grabbed onto the bloody dragon and forced it down into the deeps and rode him down. How incredible. Well, this is where I let you off. If you need anything, let me know. Barak said you'd be uh, gone in the morning, then, though. So well, we do have places to go, things to see, that sort of thing. But thank you for the hospitality. No problem. You're adventurers. Oh, yeah. Um, you can yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. stable your elk. Right. You're adventurers. I assume that you got places to go. Ooh. 
But I don't need to know the details, though. Give me a holla. Ask the uh, ask the man inside if you need anything. Otherwise, see you tomorrow morning. I'm on the gates again. Certainly. Have a good night. Likewise. He'll uh, turn and head away. Okay. I assume he led us to like a in tavern type place. Yeah, more or less. You walk in. Um, it's surprisingly quiet for the time, um, but there's a dwarf behind the counter at the far room. It's low ceilings because you know the dwarf mine. But there's a nice net. There's not a nice warm light everywhere in the tavern. Um, there's even some proper sized, uh, proper sized chairs and tables for you all. Sweet. Yeah. And Cooper waves you in. Welcome, welcome. You're uh, staying here for the night, I take it? That we are. Brilliant. Do you uh, need anything? What do you have? Well, it has been a long day, and I believe I need a glass of wine if you have it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got some wine for you. What about the rest of you? Wine would be lovely, thank you. Wine? What about you, uh, Mr. Other elf. I'm sorry, I don't know your names. Red, she's pointing at you while he says this. I'm sorry, I missed it, but He wants to know what you want to drink. Uh, ale's fine. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. An elf after my own heart. And you, Mr. Metal Man. Do you have any oil? Does Fox's oh, mouth even open? I kind of assumed it did, but... Not behind the bar, but uh, I can find some in the mine somewhere. Got any uh, preferred kind, I guess? Um, it's a good question. Would Ox have a preferred oil? Um, whatever you can find on hand. All right. Called Clear Glide. He he would have a preference, <laughs> but he wouldn't ask for it. I'm gonna say, so would would Ox care to get the good stuff or not? <laughs> so yeah, he's still bad ask for it. For it. I mean, he does. You do want to be lubricated. Except no <laughs> so the innkeeper bustles around, gets um, inks and Adriel their wine, gets uh, Rich a flagon, a dwarf-sized flagon of ale. While well, he's doing that, one. Yep. I do want to ask him if there's a, an armorer I might be able to talk to. Oh, but of course there is. This is Kelvin Scan. Smile at him. What, do, uh, what kind of work are you looking for? Work with scale, actually. Dragon scale? Ooh. Best you talk to old Stokely for that. He's the chief around here. Best Smith we got. She nodded that. Thank you. 
a problem. It'll be good to see something made out of dragon scale around here. It's been a while. Giant heart. If you'll excuse me, I've got to go find some oil for your friend. He uh, bustles out. Beric at this point has kind of just slumped into a bed. He looks kind of exhausted. He gave you guys a uh, exhausted farewell and uh, headed straight upstairs. Um, is there anything else you guys? What else do you guys want to do right now? Eventually, Inks would probably want to use her uh, background feature once there's actually more people in the uh, pub. Oh yeah, in a couple hours, the um, in a couple hours, the dwarves will start filtering in from the end of the day, and uh, you can you can kick up some drinking songs. Uh, oh, yeah, totally aside drinking from songs. attempting to to see a dwarf about an armor. Um, yeah. if that happens, if that's not going to happen tonight, that's fine. But, um, uh, after that, she'd probably offer to accompany Nick's or Inks having nothing better to do this evening. Oh no, that's the other thing she needs to do. She needs to play around with that rapier, see what it does. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, just casually using the rapier, um, with forms and whatnot. Yeah, just casually seemingly rape, using the rapier. It feels um, as if your strikes are more sure and uh, more sure and steady. You're more able to uh, hit your target and do more damage when you get there. You are exactly five percent more able. By which I mean it's a plus one rapier. Understood. Good drinking song. Um, as far as seeing an armorer, you can probably find him filtering in amongst the drinkers, if you like. Uh, if you want to talk business with him, though, you can pitch the initial. You can basically let him know that you want to talk to him about working with Dragonhide, but talking business specific should probably wait until tomorrow morning. That's fair. Yeah, he doesn't want his. Uh, doesn't want his drinking interrupted by work. Yeah, I assume he wants to do the job, but oh, yeah. we'll go into really the details and whatnot tomorrow. Very enthusiastic, but uh, work-life work balance. Oh yeah, you've got to keep that balance in your life. It's essential. Can't always be working. Don't know how you adventurers do it. You always just seem... We drink heavily. Ooh, there's this crisis over here. I got to solve it. But as soon as you've done that, you head home, you're there for a day, and then it's, ooh, there's this crisis over there, on the other side of bloody worm. I got to solve that too. Oh, but then you meet some interesting folks in between. Suppose. But you've got to have some kind of balance in your life. You know what I mean. Bloody madness. And that, my friend, is why we drink with friends. And she'll raise her she'll glass. Raise her glass. <laughs> I'll drink to that. 
Ah, oh, now you're getting it. <laughs> Um, Ox, he come, the innkeeper comes back with your oil soon enough. I hope you like it. It's, uh, the best, the cleanest I could find on such short notice. I assume you're using it to, uh, get limber? Indeed. Many thanks. <laughs> and then Ox appears to drink it. All right. Is it, uh, is it satisfactory? Quite. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's good. Uh, Rich gives you your flagon. <laughs> gives you a nod of respect for being the only one to drink proper frickin' ale. Yeah, the dwarves like drinking songs. You make. Yeah. Uh, can I do better? Can I can I do better if I actually sing it a verse? <laughs> can I get an advantage? Well, if you have accompaniment, you would have assistance, right? Uh, I know I. I may own that album, so <laughs> I may may already know the song that you're about to sing, so go ahead. Just take the advantage. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, then. then I'll do my best. <laughs> uh, let's yeah, see. Rich, can uh, you can try and accompany her if you want. <laughs> huh. Let's see. Now vodka's the best choice for mending a heart. Just open a bottle and toast your new start. If a second reminds you of his shortcomings, then open a third one and burn all his things. When life gives you comedy or tragedy, we'll tap another vat. Raise a voice of mine and say, I'll drink to that. I can't do the voice. Act. I can't do the verse I actually wrote because it's very anachronistic. Fair. Fair. You can't reference Tinkerbell in D and D. Of course you can. Also, it warms my heart that you have the album. No comment. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and... Uh, that's a better. Yeah, that's better. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and end here for the night, though. If you guys don't mind. Sorry. Sure. All right. Um, so, congratulations on your dragon. Um, you have not quite gained the level yet. Um, maybe next session, depending on what you guys do. We'll see. We'll, uh, we'll see. It's all gonna go to hell. <laughs> I mean, it's another case of we'll see. <laughs> it might. It might not. It depends on what you guys do. So you're saying there might be another uppity priest that needs a haircut with fire? I mean, <laughs> there is definitely another priest you could call him uppity. Um, I'm not sure if it would be a good idea to try and give him the uh, the Belkax haircut. Like, I'm not doing that. He uh, he might have more than 
I think it was like four or five hit points. I bet he's huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. I mean, you're welcome to try and give him the Belkax if you want, though. See, but this time he'll actually survive it, so it'll work. <laughs> for, a, for a definition of work, yes. Gonna need the entire drum. Alright. Um, it totally just flew from my mind what I was about to ask. Oh, uh, comments and stuff. Does anybody have any? Um, I'm always interested in soliciting feedback. Good times. Times. I have no specific feedback to offer, no. Okay. Um, Rich. Yeah, I guess everybody has inspiration, right? Yeah. No. Do you burn it? Yeah. Huh. Then, yes, give it to Inks for the wonderful, wonderful singing. Song. For the same. All right. Oh, yay. Congratulations. Um, I will see you all ne next week. I'm just going to go straight away. It's been a hell of a week. Um, but I will see you all. Yeah, I can see you guys all next week. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Cool. See you all in February. Uh, good night, everybody. Yeah, y'all have a good one. Night. night, guys. Peace.